The subject that we're talking about uh, for the last two weeks has been fractions. Let's begin where we left off last week. Last week we did the problem three fourths plus five six, and we did all we did uh, this problem in two different ways last week. First thing we did was we set up this problem vertically. We acknowledged that the most important thing that you needed to have when adding or subtracting fractions was the same denominator, a common denominator. In this case, you have a 4 and a 6, and they're not the same. But to add and subtract fractions, you must have a common denominator. So what we did was we told you uh, 3 fourths plus 5, 3 fourths plus 5, 6. What you should not do is add the 3 plus the 5 to get 8 and add the 4 plus the 6 to get 10 that is very very wrong rather what you should do is take the larger of the two denominators take the larger of the two denominators and ask yourself can 4 go into the 6 evenly ask yourself can you multiply a number to 4 where you get 6 and hopefully you see that you can't so what we did was we incremented the 6 from 6 to 12. In other words, you count by sixes. So and then you went from 6 to 12. You ask yourself, can 4 go into 12 evenly? In other words, can you multiply a number by 4 to get 12? And you can. You can multiply uh, the 4 by 3. So therefore, your common denominator is 12. So you should multiply this 4 by 3 to get 12. And you have to multiply this 3 by 3 to get 9. You have to multiply this 6 by 2 to get 12. Therefore, you have to multiply this 5 by 2 to get 10. That gave you 9 twelfths divided by 10 twelfths. You're going to end up adding 9 twelfths plus 10 twelfths. And now that you have a common denominator, you can just add 9 plus 10 to get 19 and then you keep the common denominator of 12. I made the mistake last week of making that 10. I really apologize. But the, you keep the common denominator of 12, you end up with 19 over 12 and you can simplify that to 1 and 7. Uh, over here what we did was we multiplied 3 fourths plus 5 6 by 1. If you multiply 3 fourths times 12 you multiply 3 fourths times 12, the 4 and the 12 cross cancel, and that becomes a 3. And you end up with 3 times 3, which is 9. That's where that 9 came from. And then we'll multiply this 12 by the 5, 6. We multiply 5, 6 times 12. The 6 cross cancels with the 12. That becomes a 1. That becomes a 2. And you're left with 5 times 2, which is 10. That's where that 10 came from. And you end up with 9 plus 10, which is 19. You end up multiplying this 1 here times 12. And you end up 1 times 12 is 12. And you end up with 19 twelfths. And that simplifies to the same 1 and 7 twelfths that we got over here. All right, so we have 2 thirds plus 5 6 minus 1 fourth. We're going to graduate these problems a little bit where now you're adding and subtracting three different fractions. Let's solve this, uh, let's solve this problem in a way that we've done before. All right, so let's line these problems, let's line these fractions up. 2 thirds plus 5 6 minus 1 fourth. Okay? All right, so again, we need a common denominator. We need a common denominator. So in the past, what we've done, in the past, what we've done, let's ignore this one-fourth just for a second. In the past, what we've done is look at the largest number, which in this case is a 6, and we'd ask ourselves, can 3 divide into the 6 evenly? And hopefully you see that 3 can divide into 6 evenly. So therefore, we would have identified 6 as the lowest common denominator. Well, now what we have is we have three different denominators. So again, what you're going to do is you're going to acknowledge the highest denominator, the largest denominator, which is in this case 6. 
But now you have to ask yourself, can both the three and the four divide into the six individually? In other words, can you multiply something by three to get six, and can you multiply something by four to get six? Hopefully you see that you can multiply something by three to get six. Uh, you can multiply the number two, but you cannot multiply a number by, you cannot multiply a number two four to get six. So therefore, six is not the lowest common denominator. So what you have to do is you have to increment the six. In other words, you have to count by sixes. Now you ask yourself, you go from six to 12. So now you ask yourself, can you multiply uh, a number by three to get 12? And you can. You can multiply four by three to get 12. And then you ask yourself, can you multiply a number by four to get 12? And you can. You can multiply three by four to get 12. That's why 12 is your least common denominator for this problem. I want to emphasize what we did not do. I really want to emphasize what we did not do. To get 12, we, dis we just didn't multiply all the denominators together. That is a very common mistake. Let's take a look at this one more time. What we did was we, multi we, we found the least common denominator, which was 12. We did not multiply 3 times 6 times 4. It will give you a, 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 a rather, that will give you a number much larger than 12. So now we multiply this 4 by 3. To get the 12, you have to multiply that 1 by the same 3, and you get 3. And you, to get this 12, you have to multiply this 6 by 2 to get 12. Therefore, you have to multiply this 5 by the same number, 2, and you get 10. Then you have to multiply this 4. You have to ask yourself what you have to multiply 3 by to get 12, and there you have to multiply 3 by 4 to get 12. Therefore, you have to multiply this 2 by the same number you multiplied down here, and you get 8. And now look what you have. You have a common denominator of 12 for each of these fractions. 1 fourth, in terms of value, is the same thing as 3 twelfths. 5 6, in terms of value, is the same thing as 10 twelfths. There's no difference between 2 thirds and 8 twelfths. And now that you have a common denominator, you can add 8 plus 10, which is 18. 8 plus 10 is 18. Subtract 3, 18 minus 3, and you get 15. You end up with 15 over 12. And that simplifies to 1 and 3 fourths. Excuse me. Forgive me. 1 and 3 twelfths. 1 and 3 twelfths, and what you end up with, this simplifies to 1 and 1 fourth. Final answer, 1 and 1 fourth. Let's look at this same problem using a different technique. Same problem, same problem. 2 thirds, 2 thirds plus 5 six minus 1 fourth. So now what we have is we have 2 thirds plus 5 6 minus 1 fourth. With, uh, the thing that we ask you to do with this technique is to multiply this expression by 1. And another way of saying 1 is uh, 12 over 12. You multiply it by 1. Another way to say 1 is 12 over 12. If you, if you, have, if you have 3 times 1, you're left with 3. If you have 2 times 1, you're just left with the same number, too. Anytime you multiply by 1, you don't change the original number. And we're going to use that principle for this problem here. All right, so we multiplied our expression by 1, 12 over 12. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 2 thirds times 12. And what, what, what happens is this 3 cancels with this 4. Excuse me, this 3 cancels with this 12. And you're left with... 4, and you end up with 4 times the 2, which is 8. Then you're going to multiply this, you multiply this 12 times the 2 thirds. Now you're going to multiply 5, 6 times the 12. 5, 6 times the 12. 5, 6 times the 12. The 6 cancels with the 12. That becomes a 1, that becomes a 2, and you're left with 5 times 2 which is 10, 
So you're going to say plus 10, and then you're going to have minus, you're going to multiply 12 times 1 fourth. So you have 1 fourth times 12, and you end up with the 4 cross canceling with the 12, you end up with 3. So you end up with 1 times 3, and you're left with the 3 there. So you have 8 plus 10 minus 3, and you end up with 12 times this 1, and 1 times 12 is 12, and you end up really with the same answer. You end up with 8 plus 10, that's 18, and that 18 minus 3, you're left with 15 over 12. And that's the same thing that we ended up with right here, 15 over 12. All right. So you end up with 15 over 12, and you end up with the same answer.